So 2020 was a tiny bit of a strange year, and I'm pretty sure we can all agree on that. I mean, there was a global pandemic, Australia literally got set on fire, and the world got addicted to Joe Exotic and his big cats. But ladies and gentlemen, this is a footballing channel. That's why today I bring to you my 10 weirdest footballing moments of 2020. Which of course, Happy New Year everyone! We can finally get rid of that horror year, 2020, and start a new chapter. And of course, 2021, my goal this year is to finally reach 1000 subscribers on YouTube. So of course, if you are not subscribed, and you like regular footballing content, please do consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it, along with hitting that like button down below. I would love to reach 1,000 subscribers this year. But starting off on our list of the 10th strangest thing to happen this year in football, Liverpool finally won the Premier League. And this is weird in the sense like, look, it's not that no one expected it. That's not why it's on the list. I think lots of people did expect it. Obviously, season before that they almost won the Premier League and the season before that they won the Champions League plus they've got a really good squad but this is one of the weirdest things to happen this year in the sense that this was Liverpool's first time ever winning the Premier League and it almost didn't happen because the Premier League almost ended null and void with the pandemic but this is very strange in terms of 30 years of struggling. They have finally won the Premier League. I think it came to a shock for Liverpool fans. They didn't know how to celebrate it. And for rivals of the footballing world of Liverpool, it came as a huge shock because the long-running joke of the Premier League is the fact that Liverpool have never won it before. So now what do we as rivals do? We can't tease them anymore. Do we joke about Tottenham Hotspurs not winning it? It is just not the same anymore. So it is very weird for the footballing world that Liverpool have finally won the Premier League. Very strange, very weird feeling, but very well deserved for Liverpool. Well done. Now moving on to our number ninth position. Now, I will admit that this one is a tiny bit controversial to be on this list, but it is Iron Robin returns to football. As I said, this is controversial in my opinion. The fact that one of the top attackers in the world over the last 10 years has retired for a few months and has come back to the world of football to play in one of the top leagues in the Eredivisie. So to me, that is very strange. And if you don't find that strange, guys, obviously this is my opinion. I want you to put down in the comment section down below what your weirdest footballing moment of 2020 was. It is your opinion, so put down what you genuinely think was weird in football this year. But as I said, I think Iron Robin deserves to be on this list. Obviously a top striker for multiple clubs, for the Netherlands, and of course Bayern Munich for about a decade. So the fact that a top attacker retired and then came back to football to me that is strange look I mean we've seen it before with players like Paul Scholes but to me as I said it is a tiny bit strange and I don't necessarily think it was a good idea because at his age now obviously having a few months without playing football as well he is currently injured for a few months and he is not sure that he will return as I said a very strange very weird thing to happen this year now moving on to our number eight position is going to be Aston Villa ending 2020 in a Europa League spot, in a European spot. That is very strange to me. And to me, this deserves to be on this list because it is weird. Aston Villa ended six months ago, they ended last Premier League season, one position out of the relegation zone. Now, six months later, they are just outside of the top four. They managed to keep hold of Jack Grealish, which I found very weird. They got a top striker like Oli Watkins, who was superb in the championship last season. They got a midfield like Ross Barkley, who in my opinion is good enough to start for Chelsea. They got a goalkeeper like Martinez, who had an excellent season with Arsenal, the one before that. So the fact that they were able to redo their entire team and really rebuild it, to me, it was super weird. It really did surprise me that they have been able to really turn the table to this extent. I mean, well done, Aston Villa, from relegation battle to a Champions League spot almost. Very weird, but once again, very well deserved. Now, moving on to the number seven spot, a bit of a sadder note, the death of Maradona. Now, I know people die all the time. Footballing legends, sport legends die all the time. Icons of the world die all the time. That is not what was weird. The weird thing to me is the fact that I have never seen a death take over the world this much. I've never seen the world so captivated by a, de uh, by a death. You can see it everywhere in American news, in rugby, 
everywhere the death of Maradona was spoken about and to me it was very weird seeing that the entire world stopping at a standstill to really admire one of the world's best. Look, obviously I think it was a long time coming, Maradona didn't have the healthiest lifestyle and I think it did kind of shock everyone when he did just suddenly die, it was out of nowhere but at the end of the day it was really weird just to watch the world stop at a standstill and admire a legend like Maradona. Now moving on to the number 6 position, Luis Suarez is moving to Atletico Madrid. I really think that this does deserve to be in the top 10 things because obviously Luis Suarez was at Barcelona for about five years, one of their top strikers, and he moved to one of their biggest rivals for free. Can we not talk about how weird that is? Luis Suarez, the vampire, <laughs> moved to a top rival for free and it's not like he didn't have many years left in him. Yes, he is 33 years old, but he is currently the top striker in La Liga. The fact that Barcelona were able to let go of one of their top players for free to a rival, to me, that is so bizarre and deserves to be on. Ladies and gentlemen, we now get into the top five weirdest footballing moments of 2020, in my opinion. And in the number five position, we have to go with whatever the hell Arsenal is doing this season. I mean, look, lots of people don't like Arsenal, me included. But if you told me that Arsenal, after winning two trophies last season, would end 2020 in 13th place, I would genuinely have a laugh at you. Yes, as I said, I don't like Arsenal. I didn't go into the season thinking that they were Premier League title contenders, but for them to spend a majority of the season in 15th place, five points out of the relegation zone, that came as a huge shock to me. And look, as I said, I didn't expect Arsenal to win the trophy this season or to win the Premier League this season, but to have players like Aubameyang, Lacazette, Pepe, Partey, Bellerin, Leno, the list goes on of really good players. For them to be so low down on the table, to me that comes as a huge shock and it is very, very weird. But ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to the number fourth position for weirdest things to happen this year. And it is going to be the sacking of Thomas Tuchel from PSG or however you pronounce his name. To me, that is strange. Why is no one else talking about the fact that Thomas Tuchel has just been sacked? I mean, he's just gotten PSG to their first ever Champions League final. He has currently this season gotten PSG to the next stage of the Champions League. PSG are currently third on the table, only one point off of first, but yet PSG have just sacked their manager. I don't know, to me that is very, very strange. And I don't know why, because I mean, look, if they want to bring in Pochettino, I don't know what their next plan is. I don't know what their goal is to keep a manager, because if it's just the Champions League, why didn't they sack Thomas Tuchel after he lost the final? of the Champions League. I don't know. To me, I think that he really did achieve a lot in his time at PSG. First ever Champions League final is huge. They can still win the season quite easily. Next stage of the Champions League, I don't know. To me, it is a very weird sacking. But ladies and gentlemen, we get to the big three and the third weirdest thing to happen this year, which I don't think enough people are talking about. Everton's midfield signings. I know this is a bit of a weird one on the list, but why is no one talking about the fact that Everton of all clubs have gotten players like Allen, Hamas Rodriguez and Decore in their midfield for less than Manchester United got Paul Pogba. And yes, I know Manchester United overpay for players, but end of story without even the Paul Pogba comparison, the fact that Everton got three midfield world-class midfield signings to me that is huge that not enough people are talking about it is so so weird i mean decore has been threatening to go to a top club for years Allen has been at napoli really giving himself a name over the last few years hamas rodriguez everybody knows and loves hamas rodriguez to me it is so bizarre that not enough people are talking about everton's midfield trio i mean what a world-class lineup and it is so weird that it is, has happened to everton but ladies and gentlemen we now get into the top two and the second weirdest thing to happen in football this year was Barcelona's 8-2 loss to Bayern Munich. Yes, I know Bayern Munich won the Champions League and they really did proclaim themselves as the best club in 2020. But the fact that Barcelona, another top club, look, I didn't think they were going to win it this season, but the fact that they lost 
8-2 in the Champions League is such a shock because they've got a goalkeeper like Ter Stegen, one of the best in the world. They've still got PK, who yes, he is getting a bit on, but he is still world class in my opinion. Busquets up front, they've got Luis Suarez, Messi, Griezmann. They had some world class players in that Champions League game, but yet they still got a horrific loss. I, to me, that is so bizarre that a top team like Barcelona really did fumble it so badly versus Bayern Munich and it is such a momentous game in footballing history and I don't think we quite grasp at how weird it really is. But ladies and gentlemen, we have now gotten to the weirdest thing that has happened in football in 2020, which don't forget, please put down your suggestions in the comment section down below and subscribe if you're not subscribed, if I have not said that enough. But the weirdest thing in football this year was the pandemic. I mean, I think that was a bit of an obvious one because no football, the pandemic, obviously there was a break in football. The Euros are now moved to next year or to this year now, if they still end up happening. To me, the pandemic has totally changed football because I think we learned this year that without fans in the stadium of football, it's really, is it even football anymore? I mean, I think the thing that made football was the atmosphere. And you see that in games like when Liverpool play, for them not to have their fans there singing You'll Never Walk Alone and to have different atmosphere at all the different clubs. To me, it is very, very strange. And the way the pandemic was so unpredictable, what it did to sports was so, so bizarre. And I think it's probably the weirdest thing that not just this year, but the pandemic was the weirdest thing that is ever, ever going to happen in football or to the rest of the world. I mean, football without fans, as we learned, is not really football anymore. And I think the players felt the same way. But ladies and gentlemen, as I did say, those are the 10 weirdest things, in my opinion, to happen to football this year. As I said, let me know what you think about my uh, options or suggestions down below, and please give your suggestions. And of course, 2021, ladies and gentlemen, I hope it is a brand new year for you with exciting opportunities, and I hope it is a great year for all of you. And of course, 2021, I do want you guys to know that I do love and appreciate every single one of you. Thank you once again for another year of coming along with me on my journey on YouTube. Finn, FY, double N, stay awesome, stay. Marvin Devine. Uh, I'm saying bye to all the lies and all the times you cried Saying that I wasn't right, yet I was right by your side You manipulator, playing games, your friends commentators And I don't know what you say about our private conversations But it's got them hating things to all the rumors